Hello everyone, back again where it all began, Willow Springs International Raceway, specifically the streets of Willow. Now the sound of performance is in the air, you can hear engines roaring in the background at both Big Willow and Streets, as well as the balcony. And today, we're back at Streets with Project Civic SI to see just how fast we can go. Now, since the last time I've been here, new wheel and tire package, new suspension, a slight tweak of the aerodynamics, and of course the change, the alignment, among other goodies. So, how fast can we go today? Let's find out. session out at streets. It's been a long time since I've done a track day here. Obviously I was drifting here in the E46 last week, but uh, that was also counterclockwise and drifting versus road racing. Uh, my driving's still very rough. Uh, irrespective of that though, I did set a new PB in the very first session in traffic of a 128.82. Uh, really pleased with that. I was watching the lap timer on that lap. I didn't get caught in traffic. I got caught behind, I believe, two cars. Um, you can see on the footage, I cut up on a G37, and he let me pass right away, which is nice, but I passed him in a corner, and I compromised a lot of speed. Uh, according to the AIM Solo 2, um, getting kind of caught by him cost over half a second. Um, so that right away could get us down to a theoretical 128.3 at the very least, and then my driving is just very sloppy. Um, again, learning to drive the car with these Godspeed coilovers is very difficult. These shocks just don't seem to do much of anything. Uh, anytime there's a second gear corner, uh, the car gets insane wheel hop. You notice it coming out of the bolt, uh, coming out of the skid pad onto the front straight. The car is getting insane wheel hop in second gear. And obviously, if you lift, you compromise the lap. If you stay in it, the car is just wheel hopping violently. Uh, a similar issue I had at Bunt Willow. Very disappointing. These shocks just are garbage um, when pushed on the track. If there's any sort of bump, the god speeds are completely hopeless. They completely fall apart. I'm gonna try tuning the shocks. Last time at Bunt Willow, I ended up turning up the rear shocks quite a lot to try and force the front down. And that helped a little bit, but not a ton. Um, I'm gonna put the tire pressures, adjust the rear shocks. I'm gonna bump up the rear tire pressures about three PSI on each corner. Turn up the rear shocks, maybe four clicks. Turn up the fronts, two more clicks. Uh, see if I can get that front end kind of hammered down a bit because that wheel hop is really compromising a lot of the lap time. I notice it most uh, coming out of the skid pad onto the front straight and in the back S's, which is a very difficult section of this track. Pretty much any car wants to understeer there as it is, puts a lot of pressure on the front tires and the wheel hopping 
with these Godspeed coilovers. You know, this is not a powerful car. It's a stock power Civic, uh, but those shocks just cannot keep up up front. And that wheel hop is compromising traction. And when you have no power with no traction, you know, it's the worst of both worlds. So uh, let me make those adjustments in the car and then we'll go back out for the second session. Hopefully I can get this thing down to a 127 today. That would be amazing for a stock powered Honda Civic with full interior and everything. I think that'd be great. That actually, that actually be as fast as my old BMW 135i, which is crazy to think about. Um, but it just shows the potential of this platform. So uh, I'll see you guys in a second. facilitate the pass rather quickly, which was nice for him, 
but it still definitely compromised the lap. My aim solo said it took off at least half a second from the predictive readout. And so with at least half a second being taken off that lap, you know, that would have been a low 128. And that wasn't a very clean lap. If you watch the footage back, I'll be the first one to admit, I'm not fast as Greets and Willow. My driving wasn't that good. And still these guys be coiler. My trust in the car just wasn't what it once was. So I'm just not driving as neatly or as tidily as I really should be. Disappointing, but still a PB is a PB and I will take it. I wish I could say that as I pushed harder from the day, I made my lap times drop, but that's just not the case. Uh, I went from like a 60 degree day to an 80 degree day, which doesn't sound that impactful. But the thing is, while it's 80 degrees in the paddock and relatively pleasant, the actual track air temperature is brutally hot uh, because it's 80 degrees plus 50 really hot cars thrashing around it all day. So you can see the heat rising off the pavement. Um, and that again just compromises tire grip and compromises engine performance. So for example, on that 128 hot lap, my peak speed was 100 miles an hour or 99.5 according to the AIM Solo. Uh, by the last session, my highest peak speed on that same stretch was just over 96 and a half miles an hour. So it's three miles an hour down, uh, which is a huge margin. This is a relatively slow car. That's a huge amount. And that explains why no matter, it seems like no matter what I did, I would just, as soon as I hit his work straight away, I'd watch the AIM Solo start adding tense, 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 tense to predictive lap time, because it, it just, you could tell I was not going nearly as fast. Also, I think I've kind of nuked my necks and tires. I think they are pretty much done. They have a decent amount of tread left to their credit. Uh, obviously, the, the stiffer spring rates have helped in that regard, but I just think they are, they've gotten so hot and so heat cycled out that they are kind of just done. So my strategy going forward, oh my God, these freaking Godspeeds. Uh, my strategy going forward is to basically use tires for two, maybe three track days, depending on the wear. And then when they still have some tread left with their heat cycled out, throw them on the back of the E46 uh, because heat cycled out stickies usually last forever when you're drifting. We'll see if that works on a, in the next episode of Project E46. So stay tuned for that. Uh, in any case, I'm still happy I got a PB. It wasn't the best of circumstances. That just proves to me there's a lot more left in this car. I need to go buy some good shocks. I have a couple of leads on that. But if you guys have any suggestions on good shocks, I will drop some money on good shocks. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. I read all the comments. It seems like a lot of you guys are super tuned in for this particular build. There's like, I see 10 of you guys in the comments pretty regularly who like have these cars or want to buy one of these cars are really tuned in and interested. So yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, in the interim, I'm gonna go home, take a very cold shower, because I'm still quite warm. Uh, the race suit traps a lot of heat in. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time where I go do more fun things with cars. Bye.